Paul with High Tech Legion and we're going to take a look at the UEFI BIOS utility for the ASUS P9X79 Deluxe Motherboard and also the Pro Motherboard. Um, technically, these both of the UEFI BIOS are quite the same. The Pro Board might have a couple missing configuration settings, but basically this overview will give you an idea of what you could expect if you use the Deluxe or the Pro X79 board from ASUS. Right now we're in the ASUS UEFI BIOS Utility Easy Mode, which shows the time of day and the date. Of course the BIOS version, what motherboard it is, CPU type, as you can see this is the brand new uh, Sandy Bridge E-Series. Total memory, yes I am using 32 gigabytes of memory in this. This is Patriot uh, memory and it has timings of 89824 at 1600 megahertz. We see the build date of the BIOS and of course the speed of the CPU. You can see the temperatures, voltage, and fan speeds. Below that we have system performance which gives you a normal mode which is here, or a power saving mode actually. A normal mode which is in the center and of course the system performance mode or optimal mode. For, this time, for the sake of this uh, overview we'll go ahead and keep it in normal, normal mode on the easy uh, when it's in easy mode. On the bottom we have our boot priority. Of course you can see that I have a hard drive and a uh, Blu-ray player in here. If we click on shortcut, what that does is, this is something new that ASUS has added to the BIOS. A lot of times you're in the BIOS, you, you don't feel like clicking tabs, you don't feel like uh, having to go through a whole bunch of different types of settings. So by hitting F3 or hitting that shortcut button on the bottom, you can see it'll bring up your Digi Power Control, CPU performance settings, CPU configuration, DRAM timing control, SPD information, OC profile, fan controls, and the Easy Flash utility. If we go up to the top, we can change this to advanced mode. <coughs> Going up to the top, let's go back. If we go up to the top here, we could go and now enter advanced mode. It'll bring up a box, click on advanced mode, and this is where we actually get into the meat, meat and potatoes of the BIOS. The main page or the main tab shows BIOS information, version, date, etc., CPU information, system language, date and time, and of course it has a security setting so you could set a password for the BIOS. Moving on to the AI tweaker button. This is where we start getting into performance tuning the system and we have different options available to help us do that. We have an AI overclocking tuner which either can be set to auto, manual, or XMP based on your, your memory. If you have XMP memory, you can go ahead and set it to XMP and it will use your XMP settings for your memory. So if we set that to manual, what it's going to do is it's also going to bring up the base clock frequency. Now you can adjust the base clock frequency on the X79 series problem is, just like with the other Sandy Bridge series, you're only going to get about 103 to 105 on a base clock enhancement. Because this system is more built towards using performance tuning using your turbo core or your turbo ratio. So what ASUS has done here is they have added a CPU strap. Now this CPU strap will basically change your base clock frequency from auto, which would be 100, all the way up to 250 megahertz. Now believe me, I've tried 250, I've even tried 166, and I haven't seen, and seen very good results with that. Uh, 
actually the system is very unstable. I have spoken with ASUS and they said that they're going to try to work on getting that fixed but it just might basically be due to the uh, actual CPU itself. So your sweet spot is going to be 125 if you want to do any type of base clock frequency uh, changes. Now this works the same way, the strap works the same way as if you were just setting the base clock alone. Sure, you could set it manually to 125, but if you wanted to add to that base clock, you're only going to get three to five, um, three to three to five in, uh, increments. Meaning, so you might be able to go to maybe 120, 28, maybe 130 on the base clock from this specific strap. Now, at 166. Of course, you do have a 166 strap. I did boot it up into uh, into um, Windows with that strap, but I could not get the system very stable. Of course, then you would have to be start to drop your your uh, CPU multiplier, and you're in a sense borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. So I would basically say your sweet spot, if you want to adjust your frequency on your base clock use the 125 strap it's a good place to start it'll give you a good ratio with the CPU uh, multiplier and the base clock overclocking sometimes you'll actually get better numbers when you're using both the CPU multiplier and the base clock when you're performance tuning clock gen full reset this basically is either either enabled or disabled. If you enable it, you'll get a you'll get better overclocking with a disabled uh, a disabled um, clock gen reset. Uh, basically, because what it'll do is it will skip the uh, skip the system shutdown. So what happens a lot of times if you adjust your base clock and you go to reset your board, of course the system will shut down and then it will re reboot itself. So it'll actually go through a full shutdown. This actually helps skip that shutdown. Turbo ratio can be set to auto by all, by all cords, meaning you can adjust it in the OS. Uh, Asus provides an AI suite which you can control your BIOS from there in your OS. So of course you want to use that with the can, can adjust by in OS if you're using AI suite, if you're using an OA, OS type of performance tuning, or you can change it without being able to adjust it in the OS. So let's go ahead and set that by all cores and now we'll see we'll see a new uh, tab come up and of course that's the auto tab. Auto is basically it's going to set the CPU, CPU uh, turbo ratio on its own. Of course you could set that turbo ratio to whatever you want to. Um, I have had this system up to 4.9 gigahertz so of course at 49 and a multiplier of 100 I'm going to get 4.9 4.9 gigahertz as you can see oh, didn't work again there we go up on the top you can see the target CPU turbo mode speed is 4.9 4900 megahertz or 4.9 gigs next we have a clock gen filter which I usually keep at auto uh, you can change it to enabled or disabled um, it does state that it will help maximize CPU overclocking when it is enabled. I didn't have any problem keeping it on auto when I uh, performance tuned this uh, system. As we go down we have the EPU power saving mode. This can be done two ways. Right now it's disabled both in the BIOS and on the motherboard. There is an EPU switch on the motherboard and the EPU power saving mode basically allows you to run at less power consumption. OC Tuner. OC Tuner is this motherboard's and the Pro motherboard's inherent auto tuning system for performance tuning your system. Asus has has presets 
inside the motherboard BIOS, which when this is clicked, it'll automatically restart your computer and performance tune your computer per, per what ASUS feels is the most stable overclock. And I think on this one, it was 4.6. DRAM timing control. When we look at our DRAM timing control, basically this is going to show you your timings of your memory. Now remember, this is quad channel memory. You actually have four channels here. I have 32 gigs and I do have all of the memory slots occupied at this time. So you're looking at a lot of settings when you're when you when you do actually use this. You have channel A, channel B, channel C, channel D and this sets you there are so many latency settings etc that you could set you'll if you really want to treat tweak your memory you'll have no problem doing it and of course as we scroll down we have the clock period I usually keep all this stuff to auto what I'm more worried about a lot of times are my timings it seems that motherboards like to go by what maybe SPD is on the or JDEC on the RAM itself but of course you'll get RAM with timings of like mine right now is 89824 this specific set of memory of course this board set it to 99924 so of course you can see that I have this set to 8 and 8 here leaving the others on auto so it just because the other settings are fine within what I need to use them for. So if we click on the back button here, let's go ahead and scroll down a little further. And our next setting would be the Digi Plus power control. This is where you could set your load load line calibration for your CPU. To achieve 4.9, I set mine to high. Of course, it does go to extreme and ultra high. This will basically adjust your load line calibration when you're using your system based on the amount of power that you're going to need. Of course, we know that on auto we're going to have a, a certain amount of voltage droop, which when we're overclocking we don't want that to happen. So this will go ahead and fix that voltage droop and actually introduce a little bit more voltage when the CPU needs it. CPU current capability set to auto you could go all the way to 140 percent. You do have a C CPU vCore boot up voltage which you can set that. Uh, basically what do you want your CPU to boot up at? You can set that voltage just say if uh, running, running voltage is 1.4 1.4 volts you might be able to boot into Windows at 1.2 so you might want to set that to 1.2 VCCSA load line calibration of course uh, this it has a lot this basically works with the memory the memory controller and it'll help you get a little bit more boost especially when you're using a lot of memory I mean 32 gigabytes of RAM this is something basically unheard of uh, up until now that where you could actually run and overclock a system with that much memory in, a, in you know occupying occupying your RAM slots so you might want to uh, use this when you are performance tuning I chose high or auto, believe it or not, depending on on what it was. On, on this specific board, I had to use high. Uh, on the pro board, I actually left it to auto, and I ran fine and got my got got my system performance tuned to 4.9 uh, gigahertz. We have a VCCSA cur current capability, of course CPU VCCSA boot up voltage, which is basically the same thing as the CPU core vo boot up voltage, but if, but it is meant to meant to work with uh, more in conjunction with your memory. CPU voltage frequency is your next one. You can set that to auto and manual. If you set it to manual, it's going to give you a fix 